Hey folks, Doxy here, and today we are going to be finishing up with the last video of this whole crazy tutorial series. And what we're doing is slapping the redstone automation onto the back end of what it is we built in the previous video. And if you haven't built what it is we built in the previous video, go ahead and click the link in the video. Okay, now that you have that built, we're going to build this. And to the average Minecrafter, this might come across as a little daunting, so I'm going to walk you through what the individual parts are so you understand what it is you're building as you're building it. Okay. Now the thing about all this is it's a circuit. And if you look over here, this circuit runs off from a pulse. But the thing is, it's all controlled by a lever. And this switch is a consistent signal. Now the first thing we need to do is turn that signal into a pulse, and that's what this piston does, because as soon as it's activated and this gets powered for just one tick, it gets cut off by this block here and gets put into the whole circuit as a one tick pulse. But that one tick pulse actually gets turned into a four tick pulse because of this repeater here. But that repeater shoots it through this block, which is attached to this piston, which is always powered as long as that switch is up. And this here is the loop control. So, so long as this piston is extended, this will loop. So as soon as you flip the switch off, this loop will be cut and will reset the whole piston crusher. Now the first thing that this does after it goes through this, this uh, loop control is it goes through the opening sequence, and that is this bar right here. It hits the top lock, and then the first part of the RS nor latch that is used for the piston crusher. And immediately afterwards, it goes through a 23 four tick repeater delay. And this is just how I set this up. This is pretty ugly. There are other ways to do this. Whatever. And after it goes through the delay, it'll go over to the bottom portion of the RS Norlatch, stopping the uh, crushing pistons of death. Whoop. And then go across this bottom portion here, activating the bottom lock, and then again into the loop control. And it'll loop again and again and again and again until this piston is retracted and it breaks the circuit. Okay? Okay, so we understand all of that now, right? Right? Okay, so let's let's build this, okay? The first thing we want to do, let's see, there's one more. First thing we want to do, you just saw it, is add two blocks onto the back of what would it is that we set out for the piston crushers. Just two blocks and you put redstone on one of them and you put a redstone repeater on the other. And this is the start of our RS Norlatch. And then we take two more blocks, drop them down to the side of the redstone that we just put down, add a torch there and another torch there, put redstone on top of that one there, and have two more blocks coming out this way again with redstone there and another repeater there this is the most complex part of the entire system and you've already built it okay then what it is you need to do is extend the bottom lock out from this corner here one two three four five blocks putting redstone on all of it except for a redstone repeater set to a tick of one here and the top lock isn't entirely different from that you just drop it out two and down one putting redstone on all of it okay okay now that you have this all set up we want to connect the top lock to the top part of the rs norlatch this is the starting sequence right here and you do that by just putting four blocks behind the two of them 
put two redstone repeaters is the only weird redstone repeater configuration. You want to have one of them set to three and one of them set to four. doesn't matter which one's which. And you want to have redstone here, here, drop it down a block and put redstone on that. Okay. And then you'll probably want to set up your closing sequence. The closing sequence drops back two from here. This is where the uh, loop control is going to be. So the piston will extend a block, completing the circuit and retracting it, breaking the circuit. Okay. So two back with a four tick repeater going into where that block would be. This is the end of the loop. And then you want to drop it down, have it come five across, just touching the backside of the uh, what the extension that we did for the bottom lock here. Put redstone across that, put a re repeater before it hits the bottom lock over there, and then a redstone on the last block there. This one's also set to four. And then you'll probably want to put in the delay. And this delay is just end to end 23 four tick repeaters. And you can set this up in any layout you want. This is five forward, three back, five forward, three back, five forward. Oh, I'm lying. Four forward, three back, four, four forward, three back, four forward, three, uh, five back. Got my numbers all mixed up there. Then you just drop it down, completing the connection to the bottom of the RS nor latch and the bottom loop. Okay. Okay. Then what it is we want to do is the feed that's going to go into the loop control. And this is the repeater that will turn that one tick pulse that we're going to be generating with the uh, piston into a four tick pulse. And you have two blocks coming straight out this way and then three blocks coming in this way. Redstone on all of it except for the one four tick repeater there. And then we're going to build the pulse generator, which is a total of five blocks set into the shape of a C that steps down into the part that we just created. So this is one up with a sticky piston here and some sort of solid block here. And then we want to build the loop control, which drops down before the part that gets cut off by the sticky piston here drops down to this way, to that way, into the back of this sticky piston here. Again, another solid block, very important, with redstone on all of that. And the last thing you need to do is just set up where it is you want your switch to be. And that switch can be anywhere this side of that pulse generator. Just add a lever and you are good to go. Look at that beautiful. Now, if I happen to go through that too quickly, I'm going to give you a top down breakdown of everything, including the piston crusher that we built in the previous step. And then I'm going to give you a grid because there's a lot of blocks in here and you want to get your spacing just right. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm going to do kind of what I did in the previous video where I tacked on the modifications I could think of just to the end of that video. I'm going to do that here because these variations aren't quite enough to warrant a video just for themselves. The first variant that I want to give you here is a slightly more compact version of the delay that we built over there. Slightly more compact still 23 four tick repeaters it's just you use some blocks here and here to control how the signal powers the next repeater at the bins okay and it still hooks into the rs nor latch the starting sequence and ending sequence exactly like the other one 
except this one steps down just a little differently. The other variation I'm giving you here is a slightly different setup for the switch control at the beginning. And it simplifies everything down into two currents where you have one current going to the pistons and you have another current that becomes the pulse and then goes into the sequence here. You can set this up any number of ways. This is just another one of them. And the final one is kind of a concept that you're free to play around with. This is a second input other than the one switch that we have over here that you can put onto the end of the delay, which will allow you to, from the default of coming down and going into the, the end of the RS Norlatch, which would be over here and completing the end sequence, which would go this way, you'd be able to throw a switch and it would take an alternate route through two more four tick repeaters and that would be just enough for the pistons to kill all the mobs and this would be a an item harvesting option where if you weren't there to collect the exp you could just have the mobs drop the items without any real serious modification no need for lava wedges or anything i'm going to give you a couple moments to take a look at that if you're interested in it it's that simple so with that you know we're kind of done all this is taken care of now and i'm going to make a bit of a request here if you build one of these let me know how this works because i'm terribly interested in what it is people do with my creations i've only seen a couple people actually post videos or or even image links to what it is they've seen in my videos and i'm just really kind of intrigued by what it is uh, people decide to do with what it is I show in my videos. Now remember, this works in survival multiplayer and survival single player. So build this anywhere you want, okay? And if you have any questions, any questions at all, just ask and I'll figure it out for you, okay? So now that that's done, and I don't have any other videos to make you click, um, it's been fun, and I'll see you around.